you are a bodybuilder or you're gonna go do some sort of HIIT workout, something to do with upper body. One of the things that you wanna make sure that is happening is that you warm up the muscles properly and from an Ayama perspective, warm up means that you're doing exercises where you're actually activating the muscles. Now, a lot of people are using muscle activation as a technique to increase range of motion, and muscle activation does, but the problem is that a lot of people are actually doing stretches afterwards. One of the biggest reasons why a lot of bodybuilders are getting injured, and I can speak to that because I've done a lot of weightlifting in my life, I've actually injured my shoulder a lot. And one of the reasons why I injured my shoulder is because I do a lot of these kind of passive stretching. So an example of passive stretching would be like having your arm here and trying to open your chest. You're trying to stretch all of the pectoral muscles, even the anterior delts into the sternocleidomastoid into um, other muscles as well. And the problem is, is that after you do those kind of stretches, then you're gonna go and apply load into those joints and try to uh, lift it. And you're going to end up compromising the joint. And that's why a lot of people are getting injured. It's because they're stretching. So one of the first things I would say is like, if you're a bodybuilder, stop stretching. Just don't do it. If you wanna have a more effective workout and almost guarantee that you won't get injured, then start doing some muscle activation practices. Now, this video is going to be a little bit longer, but if you take these exercises and start doing them on a daily basis, you'll actually find that, that you can move through them uh, pretty quickly. But some of the key muscles that we wanna work on activating is in the pectorals, obviously. The pectoral muscles are so responsible for the shoulder joint stability, also the neck, a lot of neck pain actually can be traced to the pecs. Again, a lot of people are always like, well, I've got tight pecs, I gotta stretch them out. Well, why are the pecs tight? The pecs tighten up as a result of A, not working efficiently. So muscle tightness is always a sign of muscle weakness. And I can guarantee you that if I tested um, 100 bodybuilders um, and their pecs and the force output of their pecs, I guarantee you that probably 99 out of 100 would test weak. I very, very, very seldom ever find somebody with strong pecs. So yeah, sure, they can lift like 200 pounds, but the force output, that means that the muscle's ability to contract and contract on demand is not there. So we need to improve that force output. We need to improve that neuromuscular connection between the brain and the pecs. Now, another reason why the pecs could be tightening up is because the traps aren't working properly. Now you have the upper traps, middle traps, and lower traps, and each of them have different functions. All of them are important, especially if you're gonna be doing any kind of bench press, any kind of shoulder press, or any kind of uh, um, leg squats with the arms over the head anything to do with the shoulders. If the traps aren't working, you're going to end up with shoulder pain. I actually just had a friend recently who really injured his bicep and he was doing this competition where he was kind of running and had to pick up this really heavy weight. Well, the problem was if you actually watch the video as he bent over to pick it up, his traps weren't activated, his pecs weren't working. So what started to take over was the bicep. Now the bicep should be doing some of the work, but not 100% of the work. And so as a result, the bicep became traumatized and stressed out, and as a result, he now has pain, which is the result of inflammation. So it's really important to make sure that our pecs are working, our traps are working, and as well as our serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is a really interesting muscle because it attaches in the um, anterior part of the scapula and attaches into the ribs. Now, one of the functions of the serratus, first of all, is the stability to maintain stability uh, of the scapula through different ranges of motion, especially when the scapula is protracting. Um, but it's also really important that to maintain stability that when we do any kind of protracting uh, with the scapula, 
it's there's not a lot of movements where we actually do this usually our our gym instructor our yoga teacher is always saying pull the shoulders back i would actually argue sometimes it's good to bring the shoulders forward that action starts to activate the serratus interior so these are just some simple drills that you can go through i go through them religiously sometimes you can add load with them um, there's different videos that i have where I start to add you know, load to some of these and I'll be doing more in the future uh, because they're really important for you to be able to start using so that you can start building up that neuromuscular connection, strengthening it, fortifying it, and starting to raise your tolerance level so that way when you do bend over and pick up that very heavy weight, that you're not stressing out your neuromuscular system, that it actually can withstand that tolerance okay so first of all let's get into the pecs this is a really simple one you're going to come onto all fours and then walk your hands forward a bit so you're kind of doing a bit of a mini plank bring your arms just a little bit wider and then i want you to turn the the fingers in about five degrees so it's not a lot now the instruction here is very important you're going to keep the arms straight you're gonna kind of internally rotate the humerus bone, and then I want you to squeeze the wrists towards each other, and hold that for two, three, four, five, and six, and then just kind of come out a little bit and relax. Come back forward. Now this is activating the pecs. So again, internally rotate the humerus bone, and squeeze the wrists towards each other. Keep the arms straight, do not bend the elbows, and then relax. And then do it again. Internally rotate the humerus. Press the wrists towards each other. You should feel this in your pecs. You might feel it in a few other places. If you are feeling it strong in other places, you're pressing too much. Okay, and then relax. And this time what I want you to do is bring the hands a little bit closer turn the palms in the fingers in about five degrees come forward and then internally rotate the humerus bone and then again squeeze the shoulders sorry squeeze the wrist towards each other and then relax come forward internally rotate and squeeze the wrist towards each other as you're doing this, by the way, think about squeezing your belly, squeeze the sides of the belly in, and then relax. And then come forward, internally rotate, and squeeze inward. Two, three, four, five, and six. And relax. Very good. Now come and sit back up onto your heels. If this is too much for your knees, just come and sit on the floor or come and stand up. You can even stand on your knees, okay? I like to sit back on my heels sometimes. You're gonna bring your hands, make a fist, and you're going to squeeze the fist together. Now, a lot of times when I have neck pain, neck pain is always, again, the result of instability somewhere. A lot of times that instability can be traced back to the pecs. Now, of course, there's a lot of other culprits at play, and then relax, but the pecs are a major stabilizer for the whole uh, collarbones for the which then leads into the neck and the acromion process and all of the rest of it so you really want to make sure that the pecs are working uh, properly and you kind of look at what the pecs are doing the pecs are actually squeezing in and lifting up now if they're not working they're kind of like just sagging look at what it just happened to my posture Okay, if it lifts up, my whole collarbone uh, and shoulder process starts to lift upwards. So let's do it again. Bring the, make a little gentle fist, not a firm fist. <laughs> and you're gonna internally rotate the arms, bring them in, and then just gently press the fist towards each other. How much should that pressure be? Well, the general rule of thumb in muscle activation is 10%. So it doesn't have to be that much. And oftentimes, less is more. Relax down. Bring the arms out. Internally rotate the humerus. Start to bring the fist together and squeeze inward. And hold for two, three, four, five, 
in six and relax down and bring the arms out internally rotate bring in and hold for two three four five and six and relax down and one more time bring the arms out internally rotate the humerus bone bring the arms in and hold for two three four five and six good now that's pectoral major let's see if we can get into pectoral minor so the pectoral minor actually attaches to the carotid here um, I probably didn't say that right by the way so you can fact check me and then comes in and attaches into the ribs right here so this one's a little bit different we're gonna bring the arms out make a fist and then we're going to protract the shoulders and then squeeze in just a bit okay and you should feel this just underneath the collarbones that's the part of the pec that's the pec minor it attaches right underneath the collarbones and then relax okay bring the arms out turn the palms up externally rotate make a gentle fist bring the arms forward protract the shoulders and then squeeze and hold two three four five and six and relax do it again turn the palms up bring the arms forward protract the shoulders and then press in hold for two three four five six and relax bring the arms out make a fist and protract and then squeeze inward two three four five and six and relax bring the arms out palms up make a gentle fist bring the arms forward protract the shoulders squeeze two three four five six and relax one more time guys turn the palms up squeeze the fist bring the arms in protract a bit and then squeeze two three four five six if you guys have any kind of neck pain by the way all of these drills will help your neck pain in all of my neck stuff that i teach all of these kind of drills is kind of weaved into a lot of the sequences so you can use these a lot we're now going to get into serratus anterior and the serratus anterior there's a couple of different ways that we can do that uh, one of them is to come back into that kind of modified push-up, <clears throat> come forward, and then all you're going to do now, lower the, let the hips dip just a little bit, not coming down so your lower back is arching, so do keep the core engaged, but don't let your hips kind of pop up. Let them come down a bit, engage the core, and now press the middle of your back upwards towards the ceiling and press down simultaneously into the floor and then relax. Now I don't know if you can see me do this in the video. I'm gonna try and demonstrate as best as I can. Here, come forward, let the hips dip just a little bit, engage the core, sides of the belly into midline, and then press up. So I hope that you guys can see that. This is kind of like letting me drop <laughs> this is neutral and then that's pressing up so I'm really kind of feeling the the middle of my upper back is pressing towards the ceiling another way of saying that is that the middle of my sternum is pressing upwards and then relax let's do that a couple more times come forward neutral squeeze the belly in and then press it up in two three four five, six, and relax. And come forward and take the belly in, squeeze the belly, the sides of the belly into the midline, and then press it up. And hold for two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And come forward and you're going to press it up. Remember to squeeze the sides of your belly into the midline. This again is working the serratus anterior muscle. Very important muscle. Relax. If you have any kind of pain, sometimes a lot of people when they're 
doing like military presses and they're going through different ranges of motion. They kind of have clicking feelings in their shoulders or twangy feelings or sometimes sharp pain as they go through a different range of motion. A lot of that can be traced back to, again, the serratus and the pecs not working. Come forward one more time, stabilize the core, hips to midline, and then press up. Feel the hands pressing into the floor as the middle of the back pushes away. Nice, and then relax. Oh, I can feel range of motion in my arms. The next one is one of my favorites. Very, very, very simple. And bring the arms out to the sides. Again, turn the palms up. Now keep the body in a line here. All you're going to do is to press the arms back as you do that external rotation. So don't let it come out of external rotation. You should feel this right in the middle between the shoulder blades. That's your mid trap, okay? Let's do it again. Bring the arms out, externally rotate the arms, and then bring the arm bones back and hold two, three, four, five, six, and back down. Now, if you have the opportunity to do this in the gym, sometimes you can actually have a band around your wrist, just above the wrist actually, um, and then externally rotate it and have it at a 90 degree angle. And I wouldn't use a lot of resistance, but a little bit can also be very effective. Bring the arms out, turn the palms up, and then start to bring the arm bones back. Two, three, four, five, and six and back down very good and bring the arms out turn the palms up very nice and then bring the arms out hold for two three four five and six and back down bring the arms out turn the palms up and bring the arms back and hold two three four five and six, and back down. We'll do it one more time. Bring the arms up, turn the palms up, and bring the arm bones back. Very good. Nice, now let's do upper traps. Again, if this, by the way, if this is uncomfortable, either sit on the floor or come and stand up. In fact, standing would almost be more preferable. Um, so the next one we're gonna do is for upper traps, and this is really, Kind of a tricky one to do, but also really effective. Now, we're gonna do this without weight, but if you do have one pound or two pounds weight, I say this with a lot of caution because a lot of people immediately go into competition mode and go, more is always better. But in the rule of thumb, in muscle activation specifically, less is always more. Sometimes if we use more weight, we actually use or recruit other muscles to do the work and we stop isolating the muscle that we're actually trying to work on. However, sometimes adding some weight can also increase the efficacy. So you really have to use your inner intelligence and inner awareness and put Mr. Ego on the shelf and go, is this actually supporting me or is it making me weaker? I can't answer that question, only you can, but I can also tell you that sometimes you're completely wrong because you always let Mr. Ego get in the way. Mr. Ego will eventually really hurt your body. So again, use your inner wisdom. So what you're gonna do is you're actually going to internally rotate the arms and then see if you can keep the hands sort of level with the shoulders, but sometimes they will come forward a bit. That's fine if it comes forward, but you're gonna bring the arms up and you'll kind of feel your tension um, of, of range of motion. So that's about my range of motion right now. But then what you're gonna do is shrug the shoulders up and hold two, three, four, five, six, and come on down. And again, now if that, by the way, if this is too much, bring the arms forward a bit. You might be going beyond your range of motion and that might be causing you some pain. So if it is, just bring the arms forward a bit. Again, internally rotate the humerus. Try not to shrug the shoulders forward. This isn't a shoulder protraction. You're actually just rotating the humerus bone and then bring them up and then shrug the shoulders. Two, 
three, four, five, six, down. Do you guys feel this in your traps? <laughs> so I hope you realize like if you use weight and you're not ready for it, you'll actually start to cause a lot of stress in the upper traps and that can actually lead to uh, some bad headaches. So again, sometimes less is more. Bring the arms out, internally rotate, bring the arms up and then shrug the shoulders. Two, three, four, five, six and back down and bring the arms out internally rotate the humerus bone bring the arms up to tissue tension and then shrug the shoulders up one of the functions of the upper traps is upward rotation of the shoulder blade of the scapula and then down and so if the upper trap isn't working again other muscles start getting recruited one of them is actually uh, the levator scapular can also play a role in that. Um, definitely the rhomboids. Um, and then the delts. The delts get really over abused. And so it's really important to make sure that your upper traps are working because a lot of us are doing these military presses and the upper traps, their force output isn't connected. Let's do it again. Bring the arms out, internally rotate the humerus. Bring the arms up and then shrug the shoulders. Good. Two, three, four, five, and six. Good. We're going to do one more for this sequence, and this is to really get into all of the traps, but specifically targeting lower trap. One of the functions of lower trap is actually to maintain stability of the scapula through different ranges of motion. So you can imagine this huge muscle and what happens if it's not working. You go through some different ranges of motion um, that you're doing and this lower trap isn't activated and thereby stabilizing the scapula. That's gonna cause a lot of stress on the scapula and the joints around the scapula. There's actually three joints up there, major joints, not to mention the joints in the uh, wrists, I'm sorry, in the arm as well as in the spine. So let me ask you, if you are not having a scapula that's firing properly, that's contracting properly, do you think that might cause some problems? Hmm. <laughs> yes. So let's come on to our stomach here. Now for this particular one, I want you to keep your glutes really um, uh, relaxed here as much as possible. Now we're going to just do this slowly. So uh, we'll go through the steps slowly. So first of all, lift the chest up as much as you can and just check with the glutes that the glutes are relaxed. Good. And then come on down. Now we're going to add on. So you're going lift to the, lift the chest and then swing the arms forward. Now bring the arms to a V. Look at the arms. Sometimes people think this is a V or this is a V. So a V is like 45 degrees. Okay. Now Keep the chest lifted, but now take your thumbs towards the ceiling. Do you feel that in your upper back? Some of you are probably going to get very tired. Even though you do a lot of weights, your traps are not working properly. So this is what it feels like when your traps are activated. Come on down. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Lift up. Bring the arms forward. So 45 degrees. Now lift those thumbs towards the ceiling. Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. You can even lift the chest up a little bit higher and then come on down. <sighs> lift up the chest. Bring the arms forward and then lift the arms up. Very good. Lift them up as high as you can. Lift up a little bit more. And then come on down. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Lift up again the chest. Swing your arms forward 45 degrees. Look at the arms. Keep the arms straight. Sometimes people will start to bend the elbows to compensate. Lift up the arms. Lift the chest. Lift the arms chest, arms, chest, and down. <sighs> 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 
Lift up the chest. Bring the arms forward. Lift the arms up. Very good. Two, three, four, five, six, and down. Good. This last one, we're going to just kind of play with it a little bit. So lift up the chest. Bring the arms forward. Lift them up. Now bend the elbows to about 90 degrees and lift the wrist towards the ceiling. Lift the elbows up. Bring the arms forward to that 45 degree angle. Bend the elbows. Lift up. Lift up. Bring the arms forward and down. <laughs> I can just hear some of you thinking right now, oh my God, now I have to go work out. <laughs> no, you don't have to work out. Sometimes these muscle activations is all you really need. Um, but if your goal is to get bigger muscles, because that's what you want, that's completely fine. But make sure that you do these exercises first. As I said at the very beginning of this video, these drills, we've just spent about 25 minutes going through them and talking about them. But once you start to get into a routine, you can go through most of these exercises within about 10 minutes. 10 minutes muscle activation before your workouts, before specifically your upper body workouts is going to save your bacon. Uh, it'll save you from a lot of agonizing pain and quite frankly, shoulder surgery. How many athletes get surgery in their shoulders? I hope that doesn't happen for you. I hope that you are able to take uh, these practices, apply them into your life so that you can not only live your best life, but go out to manifest and live your life purpose and be a happy person. Have a super wonderful day. Happy practicing. Namaste.